Magandang araw po sa lahat. Ako po si Christopher Tan. I will be your speaker for this session. Our topic for this session is adopting guided study sheets for online learning. Uh, meron pong akong isashare sa inyo. Sabi po ni Simon Sinek, isang famous author, you, have, you must be ready to blow up your business. Ano pong ibig sabihin nun? Meron po siyang mga binigay na examples. Alam niyo po yung company na Blockbuster. Ito po isang, uh, kung natatandaan niyo po nung, nung, nung dati, re-renta ka ng VHS tapes or ng CDs para makapanood, mo, makapanood ka ng movies. Ngayon, itong Blockbuster, yung management ng Blockbuster, naging stagnant siya. Ayaw nilang magbago. Merong isa silang empleyado na pumunta sa kanila. Ba't hindi po tayo mag-subscription mag na lang? Kasi di ba, -renta, rentahan mo yung VCD or CD or VHS, ibabalik mo sa kanila. Ngayon, ayaw nung management ng Blockbuster na mag-subscription. Mag Bakit? Kasi mas malaki yung kinikita nila sa penalty na nakukuha nila doon sa pagrenta ng VHS, VCD, CDs. Naging greedy sila. So ano nangyari sa kanila? Bumagsak sila. Bakit? Ano pong nangyari? Nandiyan na po yung subscription, yung subscription ngayon ng Netflix. Yung mga online subscriptions ng movies. So ano pong nangyari sa blockbusters? Bumagsak na. So ganun din po yan sa education. We must be willing to blow up our business. Ano po ba yung business natin? Yung ating business is face-to-face -face learning with, with kids. So, yun po ang pinaka-topic ng aking, ng, ng aking presentation sa inyo. It's a way of adapting to, to a new challenge, which is, which is the pandemic. So, that's why I'm giving this... Uh, uh, lecture to you. So, let's, get, let's get ready to blow up our business. So, before the pandemic po, ang ating expectations sa ating mga sudyante is we imagine them to be lively like this, di ba? Kaya lang po, in reality, even way before the, the, the pandemic, ito po yung ating nakita sa ating mga bata. So our challenge then was, how do we motivate our kids to participate in class and learn? So usually, we come up with classroom activities, games, we even before... Uh, magpapalaro tayo or we use gadgets for for uh, on, uh, online or 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 for class activities pero ang disadvantage nito is it takes up too much of our time now ngayon na pandemic na hindi na natin magamit itong mga activities na to itong mga games na to so what do we do now in this pandemic so one part of the solution that I'm proposing is guided study sheets. Ano po ba itong guided study sheets na to? Paano po ito gamitin? Ito po ang pag-uusapan natin ngayon. Bago po tayo magpatuloy sa discussion ng guided study sheets, uh, review muna po, na, muna po tayo ng, ng background about learning and assessment. So learning curve and assessment. So we have here a, 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 a graph of the learning curve. So sa y-axis po ay yung difficulty at sa x-axis po ay proficiency. Now as we start a new lesson, syempre sa umpisa, madali lang. So in this part here sa bandang iba ba, yung proficiency and difficulty are almost proportional. So naka 45 degree angle. But of course, as we go, we add up uh, topics in our lecture, medyo nihirapan po yung bata, nagiging steep po ang, ang learning curve. Usual naman po ito kahit po sa mga matatanda. So lahat po tayo nakaka-experience ng learning curve. Lalo na kung medyo technical, then mas steep talaga yung learning curve. So as we go on, as we, we practice, 
we 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 are over, able to overcome that uh, learning curve. So even if mahirap na yung topic, nagiging mas madali na sa atin, nagiging mas proficient na tayo. So at this point here, okay, dito nagigets na natin siya. If kahit mahirap yung topic, pero our proficiency increases. Now, how do we, where do we put our assessment in this learning curve, in this learning process? So usually po, we put our uh, formative assessments right here dito sa steep part ng learning. So nandyan po yung seat work. Nandyan din po yung exercises. And nandyan, nandyan po yung problem sets. Now, medyo may problem ako sa mga, sa mga ginagawa natin ito. Now, at in this part, in this portion, kung kailan nahihirapan yung learner, tsaka natin sila binibigyan ng seat work exercises problem. Which is understandable kasi we want to, to, to want them to practice. We want them to really uh, use their heads and, and, uh, and uh, remunerate. Sorry, is that the right term? No, uh, uh, yung parang magamit nila isip nila ma-practice para, para ma- Ma, ma pumasok sa isip nila yung topic. Ngayon, ang problem ko with this setup is we teachers sometimes penalize them with seat works, exercise, and problem sets. Paano pong penalize? For example, sa isang seat work, or let's say you give 10 items for a seat work, usually, the I mean, bata, pag talagang nahihirapan, makakakuha siya ng mga 3 to, three to 4 or 5 items correct, out of 10. Now, my problem with that is you are penalizing the, the learner kapag ka record mo yung, yung three, or, 3 out of 10 or 5 out of 10, of 10 na yun sa kanyang uh, record, sa inyong record sheet. Napepenalize yung bata at a, at a point in the learning process where he, where he or he, she is just learning. So I'm not I'm not in favor of grading students when they are just learning on this uh, learning curve, on this, on this steep part of the learning process. Now, what do I do with seat work and exercises and problem sets? Kami ako as a teacher, so as not to penalize them, I use it as, I convert them to plus points. Yung plus points na yon, I, I add to the summative assessments. Okay, para ma, mas lalong ma, motivate yung bata natin to learning. Hindi sila mapapenalize. Kasi natututo ka pa lang tapos pinapenalize ka ng teacher mo kasi ang baba ng score mo. And you're just learning. Okay, so going back to our, to our learning curve. So we have here, we put our summative assessments, maybe quizzes right after na dumadali na yung, yung, yung learning. This is ideal. Pero actually, minsan it goes means that it's so steep that yung time yung quizzes mo nandito niya ilalagay mo siya dito sa isang individual na bata. Baga it's the the, the curve is relative to the student. Now yung summative exam, test natin exams natin like the long test and part of exams are supposed to be put here na kung saan alam na ng mga bata yung, or they are confident of their confident of their learning so we should put our long test and process here. Now again, me as a teacher, what I do to motivate my two students is yung, yung scores nila out of problem sets, exercises, and seat, work, seat works, kino convert it to plus points, then I add it to quizzes and long tests. Yan po. Guided learning takes advantage of one key characteristic of kids. And that is the tendency to interact with one another. Kung matatandaan niyo po sa inyong developmental psychology, kids in the high school stage, they tend to seek the approval of their peers. So not much of the you know, of persons of authority. So this is incorporated in the use of the guided study sheets. Because the kids like interacting with peers as much as others do. But your question would be, eh, paano ngayon na pandemic? Paano sila mag-interact? Some of the characteristics of guided study sheets. 
They serve as your lesson plan. It incorporates lectures and experiments that are sometimes disjoint from the, from the lesson itself. So in my experiments, they, they really don't job, or sometimes you don't want to do the experiments because we're out of time. So it incorporates still, uh, uh, guided study sheet still incorporates, uh, can, in, can incorporate uh, experiments. Guided study sheets are exploratory in nature. I'll show that to you later on as we go. So before the pandemic, here's an example of one, uh, a few of my students doing guided study sheets. So meron silang uh, modeling experiment that makes use of uh, pellets. And this is this experiment is about kinetics. So if you can, as you can see, they, they discuss among themselves. And while this, they're discussing among themselves, I can use my time to focus on kids that are having a difficulty. Before the pandemic, guided study sheets are, were done in groups. We do this in class by group. Okay. The students discuss among themselves, and because of this, mas konti ang natutulog kasi there, there's more interaction between them, and they're more likely to interact with one another than, than, than sleep. Students' learning gets reinforced with these discussions. Okay. And because of that, I, as a teacher, have more time to focus on students with difficulties. Also, guided learning serves as the reviewer notes for the students. Here's another picture of my students are having fun doing the study sheets. So, with the study sheets, I usually do this grade distribution. So for, again, for scores from group works, exercises, quizzes, etc., those are converted to plus points. Again, the reason for that is they're just learning and I don't want to penalize them. So I convert their scores to plus points. Their uh, plus points, I add them to the long test or the periodic exam, or usually the long test. You, they usually where the, kung saan po yung mas mabigat yung weight, that's where I put it. So, mas naingan yung silang mag, mag, mag participate in class, is a exercise, is a group works because of the, of the plus points that they gain. So, guided study sheets are inherently, inherently well suited for online learning. Papano po yun? Kasi, your lecture is already there in the paper. Okay. So students, because your lecture is already there, students may choose to do the study sheets by themselves or discuss with classmates. And in this time of the pandemic, they can do that. They can do that in social media. Now, you may, may, may be thinking, if a experiments, where will they do that? Where, where, where will they? How are they going to do that? Then you can actually substitute experiments with video experiments. So. We now go to what are guided study sheets and how is it suited for online learning. So, ito na po yung example natin ng guided study sheets. As a comparison, this is a, an example of an experiment which, you, which before I did study sheets. I, I, before I did guided study sheets. So in this experiment, you can you see here, merong objectives na blanco Merong procedures, merong kang